Welcome back to another work party. It's been a while since I said that, hasn't it? Sorry about that. I was really busy with university past year and uh, it's kind of, we got a bit rubbish at this. But I'm back and we are back on the canal once again. Now we're not at Knob End Locks. We are at Ringley Locks. I'm stood on top of them right now. Don't feel bad if you couldn't tell because you can't see them. They're actually about, oh, I'd say about four feet under me, under all this earth. We're going to have to move all of it. But worry not, you can in fact see some of it. Right here, this is part of the bottom lock. This was all dug out by hand some time ago, which was quite impressive. It's done over the course of oh, many days. I actually don't know, I wasn't involved in this particular bit of digging. But this is actually the bio wash for the bottom lock. Ringley locks, as I said, two locks. One at the top, pound in the middle, one at the bottom. It's still at the bottom. The entrance to the lock is that way. Now this, sometimes, you won't, if you ever came up to have a look, you won't be able to see it. It's usually full of water, but luckily we've had not very much rain recently, so we're able to see it. These are the original safety barriers that stop people falling about 12 foot down there. And they're really solid, because I'm a big fat guy, and these can hold my weight. But I'm not going to stand on them, so my balance is rubbish. So. Let's have a look around Ringley Locks, but I'm not going to be taking that camera. I've got something a bit special. Let's have a look around Ringley Locks from my eyes. Hello. Yeah, a bit of uh, a new toy, a bit of a trick here. So, this is the top of Ringley Locks. If you've ever walked down past Knob End Locks to the bottom, you'll recognise this. But I'm stood on the other side, where the general public is not supposed to go. I won't get too close to the water's edge, but, well, you can see everything. I hope this doesn't give anyone motion sickness. So that there is the lock itself. As you can see, there's stop planks in it holding back the water. You can see the uh, cutouts where the lock gates should be. There actually are still lock gates in there. They're still there, it's just the tops of them have rotted away. If we come over to here, uh, where the stone curves around is actually the biowash. So when the water in the canal gets too high, it would go over this and down under here. You can't see it. It's been, uh, well, long gone. Anyway, <clears throat> sorry, I'm a bit under the weather if you hear me coughing. So this is the uh, top of the locks. You can actually see that there used to be two ranks of stop planks. You've got the top ones here and then another set here and there's earth in the middle. But over the decades since this canal has been abandoned, water has flowed over the top and washed it away. Uh, you can't actually see anymore, unfortunately, because they have been filled in a little bit. But underneath here is the gates. They're still there uh, and over there. You can see the little loops that used to hold the gates up against the wall. And this piece of metalwork here was the actual sluice gates, which is why there's this secondary cutout, because that's where the sluicer would have been to drop the water. Now, the water flows all the way down here. Uh, you'll notice the stonework's gone. Like Knob End, a lot of the stonework has been pilfered from here for use on other canal restorations. But if you think about how big the locks are, imagine about triple this length of stone from the stop planks there to the end. That's how big the lock gates are. They're filled in. And then after that is the middle pound, which we'll walk to now. So let me show you. I need to avoid hitting the camera on all of these trees. So let's follow the overflow that I talked about. The overflow would have gone down here. You can see some stonework here that was related. There's some stone flags. We believe, and going off of OS footage, that the actual uh, overflow flowed under in a tunnel. You can actually see right here, exposed by the ravages of time, some old pipelines. So there was quite a lot here, and there is still a lot of remaining stone. This stone right here, we believe to be part of the lock house, which was there, going off of old footage. I'll put up a photo of the locks, just so you can see what I mean where we are now. But right about here is where the lock house would have been. Now it has been demolished, sadly, it was demolished when the locks were filled in, and all the stonework, once again similar to knob end locks, has been thrown in. Uh, every single lock on the canals would have had a lock house because the boat wouldn't have opened the locks themselves like we run the system nowadays. But this would have been where the lockhouse was and the overflow would have either flowed under it or behind it. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. 
There is actually a surviving lock house at Giant Seat's locks, I think. I think it's Giant Seat. Um, the actual locks are underneath the garden there, but the lock house still survives. I believe it's a listed building, but it has been extended. Anyway, so we're past where the lock is now. You can see it over there, hopefully. And we're entering what would have been the middle pound. I'm still following the overflow. You can't walk in any of this because it's overgrown, but it's also a bit of a bog. I need to watch my footing here. We've actually cleared out a lot of trees in this area because this has all got to go. We're planning on excavating this soon. Duck under this tree. Go around this one. As you can see, since the locks have abandoned, nature has taken over. Uh, we should hopefully be in the middle pound by now. You can't tell. I hope the wind is not too bad. This is where the middle pound is. Uh, once again, you can't see it. It's unfortunately buried under, in some places, eight feet of earth. But we know it's still here. If you look over there, that's the water that was flowing over the top of the locks. It's created a mini lagoon, like a, a lake of sorts. It's not very deep, but because it's constantly flooded, the actual silt underneath it will eat your boots. I've nearly lost boots here before. Anyway, a lot of this silt actually came from here. There is a stream that runs down, and we're going to follow this stream shortly. As you can see there, it's dug away at the sides of this over many, many, many decades. So a lot of the earth that's actually here is silt. Uh, you can always tell the difference between silt and earth because silt is very fine and very sticky when it's wet. Uh, and this is the stream right here. As you can see, one big stream. And now we're getting back to where we started. Everyone's working hard. So you can see this is where all that runoff from the canal's coming. Last time we were here, which was last month, we actually cleared this out, but this water level has dropped by about three inches. Uh, but in some places it could get to a foot deep. It's a lot lower now because the water flow has, well, slowed down. This tree came down. As you can see, they're working hard on uh, clearing the uh, stone off. Once again, I mentioned that silt that's come down. This has covered up the stones, which had been cleared. So we're just clearing them off now. Hello there. <laughs> and need to hop over the stream. Yeah. And there we are, right at the end. Uh, and this, where I'm stood, is actually the second lock, which is much deeper down. Where I'm stood, it's at least six feet down. As far as we're aware, it's completely intact. It's not been messed around with, no stonework's been robbed. At least we hope. There isn't any confirmed. Uh, and the lock would have gone down here towards those trees. <coughs> After this is Ringley Road, I believe. Yeah, it must be Ringley Road. And then the canal actually goes under a bridge. The bridge is still there. It's been under underfilled, but the bridge is actually intact. So we're hoping that we can uh, excavate that in the future. Hopefully the bridge is okay and we can carry on towards Ringley. That's Ringley Locks. Let's get back to the bog standard camera now. So I'm stood in an hole. I didn't dig this hole, honest. This is the work of all the volunteers we've got here. And I'm stood on the stonework. Uh, same height as stonework around the overflow that's already been exposed. One big hand dug hole. It's what? You'd say three feet down? Not three feet down. Uh, the stonework just stops, so we're not sure which way it goes, but this is the amount right here that we have to dig out to uh, find the rest of the um, middle pound. Quite a lot of digging to do, uh, so bad backs ahoy. So it's Sunday, um, 
Sorry I didn't film off the end of yesterday. Well, we've got finished up. Today is Sunday, halfway through the day we're starting, and it was raining earlier. But behind me, that is the old fire wash. So, for context of where we are, we're on the Bolton Arm, quite close to the overflow. Now, the overflow is constantly flowing. It's, well, where the water flows over when the canal is too high. Water flows so constantly, and it goes down a channel and into the river. But this behind me is the old bio wash. Now this is an important part of the water management on the canal and it's about 200 years old, it's as old as the canal. At one time at the end of there would have been a sluice and what they could do is change the water where the water goes. So at the moment it flows into the river but what they could do instead if the bottom canal needed some water was lift that sluice and the sluice that used to be up on the top canal and the water would flow through here down this very long channel into a grid at the bottom and it would enter the bottom canal. Now this hasn't been used in over a century at least because, well, it wouldn't have been very much used when the canal was open. If you had come along here some time ago you wouldn't have been able to see it because it's been completely filled in. This that we've dug out is what we've been working on for the past couple of months and it's a big job, it's full of rubble and full of dirt but we've dug it out and exposed the lovely flagged floor massive blocks of stone that aren't going anywhere anytime soon. So now we're going to continue further behind where the camera is because that's also full of earth and muck to clear it out to the first water drop because after that if we eventually let water through here it's just going to flow to the bottom without an issue because the rest of the channel is in very good condition considering it's been about a century since it's been last used. So let's get to it. Well, this is us at the end of the day. As you can see, I'm standing in a pit that wasn't here earlier. Sorry I didn't film too much of it, but the weather's a bit abysmal now. Uh, so what we've done is we've dug out the overflow channel and found something quite interesting. Over there, it's stone lined, and there is stone up to exactly about here. There it is, right there. And after that, there's no stone. So we reckon that either the stonework's been pilfered some time ago, or it's just clay lined all the way to over there where there is a uh, stone waterfall. But we don't know, so it's worth more of a dig, but it's chucking it down now. We're losing the light, so we've decided to call it a day a bit early because it's a bit miserable, and I don't think anyone really wants to work in this. So, thank you very much for watching. So, here's the date of the next work party at the bottom of the screen. If you want to come join us, check out our website or our Facebook group or even our Twitter if you want to know more about the canal. So let's roll the before and after photo, shall we? It's been a while since I've done that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.